Uh, I'm Marco Gattani, and uh, today I want to talk to you about Staffetta. Staffetta is a mechanism that exploits uh, duty cycling in order to improve opportunity data collection in a wireless sensor network. Let's, firm, le, let's first give you a brief uh, explanation of the problem of data collection in wireless sensor network, very brief. So we want to collect data from a wireless sensor network as fast as possible and under severe resource constraints. We have a SYNC that is uh, the special node that is in charge of collecting this information and usually has no uh, resource constraints in terms of computation or energy. On the other hand, we have the nodes that produce this data and, and needs to deliver this data to the SYNC over a multi-op path and our battery power. Because they are battery power and they need to fulfill some uh, application requirements in terms of lifetime, they need to duty cycle the radio. And this means basically they, need to, they can only keeps, uh, keep the radio on for very short amount of times at the periodic amount of time. This duty cycling makes communication expensive and difficult due to the time and energy required by the nodes to rendezvous. Here I have a, a simple example in which you have a sender and a receiver that you duty cycle the radio. When you see these uh, bold lines is when the radio is active basically. And as soon as the sender wants to contact the receiver, is to turn on his uh, device uh, and keeps it on until uh, the receiver turns it on. And when they both awake, then is when they rendezvous. This uh, rendezvous is actually one of the main source of inefficiency in uh, duty cycle mechanism. We'll see later is quite important for this talk. That is why I'm introducing it. Uh, because data collection is a well-known problem in wireless sensor network, uh, we have plenty of solutions. The most uh, traditional ones are based on uh, a, a tree uh, routing protocol and unicast primitives. Mechanisms like uh, these are uh, collection tree protocols, ripple, for example. In, uh, in this mechanism, basically, each node chose uh, a forwarder among his neighbor, and actually they want it as the best routing metric. Basically, that conveys the idea of how far you are from the sink that is your final destination. In my mind, these mechanisms are like uh, uh, FedEx trucks that needs to deliver a packet somewhere. They ch just, just take their GPS system and follow the shortest path. Unfortunately, because uh, of the rendezvous uh, problem, sometimes these paths are not the fastest one because uh, the best nodes in your uh, next open neighborhood can maybe is not the one that will wake up very soon. In this case, like if you want to do the analogy with a, a courier truck, is like taking the shortest path independently of the traffic in the city, okay? And also because of all, always the best paths are used. Here we have a problem because uh, first uh, the best uh, connected nodes are overused, so the loading uh, the, no the loading the network is uh, not uh, well spread. And also we have a fragility in t when uh, there are dynamics in the network. If one of the good nodes dies, then we have problem delivering our packet. On the other hand, we have opportunistic routing mechanism that use an anycast primitive. In this case, instead of uh, selecting only just one forwarder, the best, they choose a, a subset of their neighbors as a forwarding set. And basically they choose the first one that wake up. In this way, they are able to reduce drastically the rendezvous time while keeping the routes quite short. Of course, not the shortest. And this is my mind reminds me of the bike courier that in order to deliver the packet, they decide at each corner, which is the best route independently if it's the shortest or not. But they take into account traffic and other shortcuts. Another good thing about uh, opportunistic routing is that uh, it's uh, robust uh, because it provides path diversity. So because the choices are made every time, we choose many paths in order to deliver to the sync uh, our message. So if one of the paths is broken, another one will be used. Plus, uh, the network load is more uh, diverse. Okay, these are good uh, uh, things we want from our protocol. Ideally, we would like a mechanism that uh, follow both a short path and a fast path, fast in terms of forwarding times, and also provide robustness to dynamics and also diversity in order to have a better uh, network load. This is what Staffetta, the mechanism I'm proposing does. Basically, Staffetta empowers opportunistic mechanism by making the choices towards the nodes that are closer to the sink more probable, okay? This is basically the picture, what the picture represents. Instead of having only one or few, basically we can forward to everyone, but 
the probability to forward to the best node, the ones that are closer to the sink, are higher, okay? Let me give you an example just to, to, to understand better. This is what will happen in a tree-based approach. We have a node number three that needs to deliver its packet to the sink. So we'll wake up and wait until node one, the best forwarder, is awake. This time it takes a lot of time. This is basically the random time, right? After one uh, wakes up, it will immediately forward to the sink because as we said before, the sink does not have energy constraints. It's always on. It's immediately ready to receive a packet. This is instead uh, the opportunistic version of the same problem. So basically in this case, uh, the first node to wake up is two, is in the forwarder set of three. So basically node number three, immediately as soon as number two is awake, it will forward to two, two will forward to one and so on. In this case, we can see that the rendezvous time of this node is shorter, but because not the shortest path is used, basically the final latency is not very different from tree-based approach. In general, it's better, but it's not yet uh, the best. So what, what happened with opportunistic when we put Staffet on top and what uh, uh, basically uh, we bias the choices of opportunistic towards a better node? How do we do that? Basically, we make the nodes that are closer to the sink to wake up more often. This way, we attract the messages. So in, in this case, for example, I just made the node one, that is the best uh, node in this case, to wake up twice as often. And what you can see is basically that node three immediately find as a first node, node one instead of two. Basically, we have a, a, a similar path length of the tree-based approach while having a very reduced rendezvous time. And this is basically the main idea of Staffetta. Now that I explain you the basic idea, let's go deep a bit in the mechanism. Uh, Staffetta is based on two steps approach. The first uh, step is exploit the relation between the activity of nodes and the rendezvous time the one I just explained, in order to create a gradient where the nodes close to the sink are the more active. In this case, we have a, a node in red, that is the sink, and basically the activity of node goes down as soon as we go far away from the sink. Once we created this gradient, we basically exploit it in order to improve the, uh, the efficiency of opportunistic data collection. Let's see how we do both steps. First steps, we give uh, to the node a fixed energy budget. And this budget is specified in terms of duty cycle. For example, we can say every node in the network can consume at maximum 5% of their energy. This means basically a duty cycle of 5%. Second steps, we, give, we tell the nodes, given this uh, uh, budget, you wake up as, as much as possible. How do they do? Basically, they measure how much they are consuming every time they forward the message. And based on that, they say, okay, I can wake up 10 times in order to use my budget. Okay, given these two simple rules and a sync, basically the gradient is automatically created. Okay, let's go a bit uh, step by step and see what happened. Here we have basically the mechanism with a fixed duty cycle in white and the mechanism with Staffetta enabled in orange. And basically here I'm plotting the nodes uh, depending on their distance from the sink from one to five ops away. And here you have the forwarding delay, basically how much it's costing to, work, to forward the message, and the wake up frequency, you know, are how active the nodes are. First stop, basically, is uh, the rendezvous with the sync is uh, immediate. So there is no basic rendezvous, they just send a packet. And that is what you see here. Basically, in black, is just the cost to transmit the packet. And because of that, nodes at one op from the sync, what they do, they immediately increase their frequency, in this example, up to more than 50, uh, 25 hertz, okay? Because of this in increased frequency, the nodes at two ops will perceive a shorter rendezvous because it's easier to find someone that soon will wake up. And, and therefore, in Staffetta, they will increase their frequency also to a higher frequency, in this case, 10 hertz. While you can see that nodes without Staffetta, they will keep their wake up frequency constant. And basically, you can see here, basically, that forwarding delay is a lot uh, lower for nodes with Safeta than for the nodes with a fixed duty cycle. Basically, this, uh, this uh, improvement in the, in the efficiency of the random that spread over the network in, with a decreasing fraction, and is actually with the geometric rate. And as you can see, basically, you have this gradient that goes down the farther you go from the sink. On the other side, you can see, basically, that uh, the forwarding delay are less and less efficient, okay? 
while for the fixed is basically the same except for the sync neighbors. So now that I show you basically how this gradient is created, let's see how we can use it in order to improve opportunistic data collection. First of all, because most of the nodes are increasing their uh, activity, basically we are reducing overall the, the forwarding delays of nodes. The only nodes that usually has less activity than what uh, that compared to a fixed duty, uh, uh, duty cycle are the ones that are leaf nodes that are farther away from the network. Luckily, it is not that, that will not influence any forwarder. So even though they are uh, less active, they are not affecting the latency later of the resulting packets. The second improvement is because we are biasing the opportunistic choices of uh, opportunity data collection. Uh, we are more likely to find uh, very good nodes. In a traditional opportunity mechanism, the probability of choosing one of your forwarders is just the same. Here, instead, you are more biased towards the good nodes. This helps us, in the third point, actually, to exploit temporal links. If, by chance, we have 10 seconds, which are very good nodes that let us uh, to skip three or four ops is active, there will be high, very high chances to select this node. Uh, fourth point. Because the nodes close to the sink are also the more active, we, they are able to handle higher traffic loads. And this is a, a typical problem of data collection, which nodes close to the sink must be active more often in order to collect all the data from the network. Final point, because uh, overall the activity of the nodes is higher, we also increase the adaptability to network dynamics. Because the nodes are more active, they can overhear messages, and they are able to respond faster to network changes. Now that I explain you the gradient and how to exploit it, let's see how it works. We evaluate Safeta against one opportunistic, uh, opportunistic data collection protocol, the state of the art, that is ORW, and three routing metrics. Basically, we first uh, compare against uh, the native ORW as was presented, and later we implemented a generic implementation of uh, low power listening with Anycast, and we implemented three routing metrics based on state of the art protocols in order to have a, ba a base uh, mechanism to compare with, just to show uh, just what Stafeta improves. And the three metric we use is uh, expected duty cycle, this is directly from ORW. Then we have Q backlog, that is from back pressure. And then we have a null routing metric that is representative of random walk. Okay? And we tested basically all these uh, sets uh, on two different testbeds, Flocklab and Indria. For timing reason, I will show only flock lab results, but if you're interested, you can check the paper. This is first uh, the comparison with the uh, ORW as it was implemented in uh, TinyOS. We have uh, different uh, data rates and basically three different metrics, latency, delivery ratio, and duty cycle. Here you see basically ORW against our implementation with Safeta in, for the two rates, and basically it's the same here. Each box is basically without Safeta and with Safeta. And basically what we, we can see that in all the three metrics, we have drastic improvements, uh, drastic improvements. In latency, we improve from 80 to 450 times, while we reduce the duty cycle from two to nine times. The delivery, the, the delivery ratio is pretty comparable, just a bit better. Now I want to explain to you how we achieve this improvement. And to do so, we will use basically our implementation of the Anycast mechanism, just basically to show what is the difference just by changing the duty cycle. First of all, let's look at latency. Basically, Stafeta achieves low, low latency by reducing the forwarded times and the path length. Here we have basically the three uh, metrics, ADC, Q backlog, and random walk. And without Stafeta, so with a fixed, uh, duty cycle and with Stafeta duty cycle. And what we can see that as soon as we apply Stafeta, the path length is reduced. Why so? Because as we say, we are biasing toward the better nodes. So either the opportunistic selection will be biased toward the nodes that are closer to the sink. And the, because of that, and because of the increased activity that reduce every forwarding time, basically the latency drastically is reduced. You can see basically even the, the worst node, in this case of the box plot, represent all the nodes in the network. So this is the median value and the other basically represent the distribution of the values in the network. Here we have you achieve a, an improvement from 30 to 70 times, just because we are changing in a smart way the duty cycle. Second is delivery ratio. 
Here, basically, we improve the delivery ratio just because we are reducing the queue backlog in the packets. Because uh, our nodes are a lot more active, they're able to deliver the message fast. Here you can see, and this is justified by these two plots. You can see, basically, in the same way the latency is reduced in the three metrics, basically we have a, a similar improvement in the delivery ratio. Okay? In this case, we have 1.5 times better. Third metrics, duty cycle. Here is quite interesting because what happens is that uh, Stafeta increases the activity of the nodes while reducing the energy consumption. This is a bit counterintuitive. Basically, nodes are more active, but they consume less. What happened here, you can see basically, without Stafeta, they have a fixed wake-up frequency. With Stafeta, basically, the major part of the network has a, a lot higher frequency for both metrics, for all the three metrics. What happened here is that if you can see without Stafeta, there are some nodes that are very efficient here, here, and here. While with Stafeta, these nodes disappear. Basically, these are the nodes that are very close to the sink, that are very efficient, and in this case, they are greedy and they just forward their packets. In Stafeta, instead, they increase their activity a lot, so that basically the energy consumption increase. But the effect on the other node, the poor ones, that were, which uh, rendezvous was very bad, it goes down. So basically, we are reducing the variance, and the result is that the median and the variance goes down. And actually, what you see here is a dashed red line. These are the budget we were giving to the network. And this is basically driven by uh, our application requirements. We have a certain type battery size, uh, certain lifetime. Basically, we decide the budget, and we know basically that our nodes will be automatically stay under this budget. In terms of energy consumption, we do three times better than with a fixed uh, duty cycle. With a fixed, yeah, duty cycle. Finally, we wanted to check uh, how good is our mechanism to adapt uh, to mobility, because of course, if you have a gradient that points toward the wrong direction, this is something you don't want. So we took a flock lab uh, testbed, and we make the, uh, the sink to move uh, to three positions. Position one, position two, and position three. And basically, we plot uh, the characteristic of three set of nodes, uh, the one-up neighbors of the three positions, OK? Uh, yellow, red, and black. Let's first see what happened to the activity gradient of nodes. Basically, here I'm plotting the wake-up frequency for these three set of nodes over time. And the sync moves after 200 seconds and 400 seconds. That's by the way you see these uh, black bars. As soon as the sync moves, the nodes that were close to, to it immediately uh, measure a longer rendezvous time. It's just measured. And because of that, they immediately adapt their frequency to a lower value. That is what happened here. Okay? At the same time, the red set of nodes that are now the new one-op neighbors, they detect that is improved the rendezvous and start increasing their frequency. You can see basically that you have high frequency in the first position, medium frequency, more or less, and low frequency. And the same happened for the three uh, set settings, basically. Now that we saw that uh, the activity gradient can, uh, imp uh, can adapt immediately to the changes, let's see what happened, for example, to something like the throughput in the network. And basically, we will focus only on, uh, on the first movement of the sink around the second 200. That is basically I'm plotting the throughput for the fixed uh, wake up frequency and for Stafeta. With the fixed wake up frequency, after the node moves, uh, what happens is the throughput of the nodes that are now the new ones increase drastically. Why so? Because the, node, the red nodes basically had a queue backlog of packets. And now that there are new neighbors of uh, uh, the sink, they immediately can uh, discharge their load of packet, right? The same happened for the black set, that is, the, was the farthest, uh, that the, now uh, they can deliver some of their packet in the backlog. What happens is that to the yellow nodes, that now becomes farther from the sink, their throughput goes down, okay? This is a, a known uh, thing about if you have a moving sink uh, in a network, it helps uh, actually delivering data collection. While in Stafeta, what happens is that the throughput does not change. That is because nodes were already delivering all the produced data. So basically, the movement of the sink does not affect the system. They don't really see any big difference in what's happening. To conclude, Stafeta simple rule of waking up, given an energy budget as fast as possible, is able to achieve a desired lifetime in a simple way, 
and adapt fast to network changes. Uh, not only generates an activity gradient that can use to bias opportunistic choices toward the sink, and this bias is so strong that we proved in the paper, I didn't show you here, that you actually can remove the routing metric and just use their uh, bias in order to route to the sink with similar performances. Moreover, it reduces the latency, the path length, and the energy consumption. If you want to play a bit with Safeta, I have an implementation, a Contig implementation on GitHub, just have a look and let me know. Thanks. We have time for a few questions. If you stand up or if you come to the mic, that'd be good, thank you. Okay, thanks for the presentation. Uh, my question would be that you propose an opportunistic routing mechanism and then compare it with the best available opportunistic routing mechanism, but that is not sufficient for me. For the last two, three years, we had a lot of protocols related to capture effect and how would you, I mean, if you don't compare quantitatively, how would you qualitatively or generalize your contribution in the big picture that why should I use your protocol and not the, the ones from the last three years? Thank you for the question. Um, actually, uh, I, I would not like to sell Stafeta as one mechanism for data collection. Of course, we compare that with the state of the art, but it's actually uh, a duty cycling mechanism that improves opportunistic. So it really depends on what opportunistic mechanism is uh, over Stafetta. And so I, I would say like uh, I can compare the actual version of opportunistic mechanism with underneath Stafetta and compare with the state of the art like a glossy or mechanism like this. But I think that the problem is that here I want to show you what uh, the smart duty cycling gives to opportunistic, right? So if uh, in the next week you will have a new opportunistic mechanism with a better routing, then also the the performance of the with that will improve, right? Uh, we saw already that uh, depending on the uh, routing metric, uh, um, routing metric you're using, you have very different uh, performance. So of course you can compare. I will say also you're looking at quite different uh, um, uh, goals because here you just have data collection, the other uh, is more generic, I would say. But I'm not concerned, I, I just want the best performance. That's I agree it. that if now you want an application that uh, do data collection, you, you should have to compare, yes. Hello, uh, this is Hyung Jin Kim from UC Berkeley. And I have a simple question. Definitely it is a collection oriented mechanism, right? But uh, do you have any idea it, what will happen if it delivers, handles the downward traffic in a mostly most application, even though yeah, downward traffic is very rare, but it has, right? So, uh, thank you. thanks for the question. Uh, actually, uh, I was thinking on how you could do that, basically. Uh, the idea is that whenever you run the with a node, you could have a, a push-pull data exchange, so the data can go on both directions, and what you could do in similar, in ways that are similar to what was done in, uh, opportunistic RPL is basically you keep a track of which nodes pass through you and you can basically on an hypothetical routing tree that is not very defined in opportunistic mechanism but it's still there. You could basically make the node to go back downward towards the farthest ways. It will not be great in latency mm -hmm. because uh, nodes farther away they are the ones that are least efficiency but with the push-pull mechanism at least you will be able to provide uh, 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 at least the delivery of the message to the leaf's nodes. And with your proposal then, compared to the com conventional opportunity routing, the downward downstream traffic delivery latency will be improved Worse. also? Uh, it will improve for all the nodes uh, which uh, activity is increased. So I would say for all the nodes except for uh, probably the leaves. Because in, in this case, in order to fulfill their budget, they will uh, wake up uh, probably less often than uh, their initial frequency. But that depends on your budget and the starting frequency. Okay, thank you. Hi, Usman Raza from Toshiba Research. Um, I have one question regarding power consumption. So basically, typically in wireless sensor networks, we think that once data start moving closer to the sink, the nodes which are closer to the sink consume much more energy because they are actually transmitting more data. And now you have this mechanism 
in which you intentionally make nodes which are closer to the sinks wake up more time, uh, uh, actually wake up often and consuming more energy. So more what energy. is the minimum and the maximum energy consumption? So uh, my question is that would it load, it, would it cause an imbalance between the load on, on your sensor nodes and the maximum power consumption and the minimum power consumptions are too far away that some of the nodes will die very soon and some of the nodes will not. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Uh, thanks also because I can clarify this point. Actually, uh, what our mechanism achieves is uh, to reduce the variance in the energy consumption and also it gives you a maximum energy consumption. That is something that is interesting if you want to have a maximum, li a minimum lifetime. The idea here is that we are exploiting the presence of the sink. And because there is a sink, the nodes, uh, the first, uh, the one op neighbors are very efficient. And basically what we are doing is to make these nodes to work a bit more than the others in order to spread uh, the sync benefits to the rest of the networks. In, uh, in uh, the traditional mechanism, let me see, okay. In traditional mechanism, what happens is that these nodes, uh, the tradition is in white, these nodes are very efficient and these ones are not. So if you have a, a bottleneck problem which the nodes close to the sink are very active, this one will not have big problem because they are very efficient. Maybe the two op sinks uh, neighbor, they will have problem because you see they consume a lot of energy and they need to deliver a lot of traffic. So what we do, we make these nodes to consume more in order to lower down this. Okay? And because they, they do that by being more active, they immediately, they automatically also handle the more traffic data. That's basically what happened at the duty cycle. Basically, these are all consuming more just because these guys are not very active. So in the end, actually, it looks weird, but by being more active, uh, the first stop, basically all the other ones are able to benefit a bit from that and be being low, lower than a certain threshold. So we say the balance here is, uh, is better than, uh, than deterministic mechanism. Actually, I want to follow up on that. If you did, uh, if you looked at the network lifetime, mm -hmm. then would you, would it not be harmful? Like, would Stafeta not kill sort of the one hop, two hop neighbors earlier yeah. than Wait the So basically, it uh, depends on how you define network lifetime. So here you can see basically the distribution of duty cycle in the network. So if you, if you basically look at the worst case, so as soon as one dies, basically we'll have to compare these two bars. If you look at median, these two, but if you can see basically on every, basically part of the distribution is lower, except for the, the best one. But so you if really you left them is when uh, the, the last node dies, then we are making it worse. No, I, I guess uh, the, what are you, what is the application, right? So you're trying to collect data at the sink. And yes. so if I can't deliver data to the sink, that's when I have a problem. And it seems like uh, the nodes that will first die in, uh, while using Stafeta is likely the one hop neighbors. And then. But they, yes, maybe. Uh, they, here I, I don't specify which over there. But they're all under a budget. And because you define the budget based on the application, basically it will be more likely that with Stafeta, a lot more nodes will die just after your deadline rather than a traditional mechanism. But because you can set the deadline, who cares? Well, if there are no more questions, let's thank the speaker again. Okay.